Okay, I'm making this video to kind of fill in some blanks on the Fosco comparison feature uh, of Remote Rowing Coach. Uh, this is an in-app purchase uh, in my app uh, that allows you to do some training and select different stroke rates and then the app will calculate the average force curve uh, for each of your different rates, allowing you to make some comparisons to see what happens when the rate changes and uh, how your force application occurs. The, the driving question uh, that people have asked me is, well, how do I use this uh, to help me uh, row better? And, uh, and this video is an answer to that question. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about you know what's going on here uh, towards the back end of the stroke, what's happening uh, you know on the leg drive and the transition, um, you know to the body opening up and what's going on with that, and I think in order to understand that we've got to look a little bit at what a force curve is, uh, look at a little bit of theory here in terms of. Um, you know, what we're looking for ideally when we create force curves. I think the, the driving most important point that I've got is you can't look at the curve and learn how to row. You've got to feel uh, how, you've got to feel good connection and acceleration. And then when that, that feeling is right and the connection is there, then the graph is going to represent uh, good force application. And so as a coach, what I'm always trying to do is, is make a mental picture in the mind of an athlete so that they can, they can coordinate, they can move uh, and transfer power to the machine uh, in a way uh, that is effective. So a little caveat about that before we get going. All right, so a force curve is generally going to look like this. It's going to have force uh, in newtons on the y-axis, I think that's pounds uh, on the handle uh, of the Concept2. Uh, and I think it's important to note that the Concept2 derives uh, the, a number uh, rather than directly measures it, uh, which, is, which is different than you know, some kind of a transducer on an on a oarlock in a boat. And on the, on the x-axis is time uh, on the Concept2, I think on a row perfect its displacement its its stroke length as well and so um the force curve uh generally should look um you know pr pretty uh pretty rounded uh as best as possible uh and you know we want to we want to be able to keep uh the acceleration on and so you know what we're looking to do is if you if I drew the tangent to uh that line uh, what's happening is that is always changing but it's always kind of rotating uh, in, in a clockwise direction and so ideally what you're looking for is a smooth curve uh, without uh, any divots in it uh, as possible and again this is an ideal it's going to be very hard to get something that's that's perfectly symmetrical and uh, there's plenty of discussion out there about you know what the ideal force curve should look like. It depends, um, in my opinion. Uh, this is this is an example of what uh, is known in in uh, the um, the sport of rowing, written by Peter Mallory, is a Schlubschlag force application. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how to how to get that done. Um, but it's essentially pretty close to a parabola, if not a parabola. Uh, what we're looking to do here is we're looking to uh, create as much area under the curve as possible um, because that ultimately is impulse. And the greater the area under the curve, the, the more impulse that we're transmitting to the machine. Uh, and so, you know, that's, that's basically average force times time. Uh, is going to give you the impulse for a stroke. So, so generally, that's what we're looking for. Uh, depending on you know how you row, um, your force curve may look a little bit different from this. Uh, and so, let's take a look at another type, more of a front-loaded force curve. So, this is a this is a front-loaded uh, 
drive um, and with an emphasis definitely on the leg drive. Um, you know, we're hitting uh, peak force here, um, you know, earlier than we typically would do with the, with the force curve I showed you uh, on the previous slide. Um, and typically what, what can happen with this is, you know, if you're, if you're being very explosive off the front end, uh, and we're, we're talking about just, you know, exploding off that front end, um, what can happen is, you know, when you start to open up your back and your arms, you cannot continue that acceleration. Um, and so as a result, you've got to get this left leaning, uh, force application and, you know, round about here, uh, you might get, uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit of a divot in that, uh, right there, because ultimately when the curve, uh, tends to collapse on itself, you, you've lost the continuity in force application and then you recover from it. And so it starts to become, uh, curved again. Okay. So this is a front loaded drive. Uh, a lot of biomechanic folks, uh, think this is the way to go. Um, I'm not going to get into the weeds on, you know, different types, what the best thing to do. I tend to teach, uh, you know, very patient, uh, beginning, uh, of the stroke. I don't think it's great to smack that catch, but you still want to be sharp on that front end. Um, so it's really a knife edge in my opinion on how to take that catch, you, you know, too slow and you missed it. Um, I'm not going to show a force curve that shows a late drive acceleration because that has never been shown to be a successful force application uh, on, you know, on that drive. So that's not going to be part of this because I don't see the point in talking about that in terms of, you know, are we trying to get, are we trying to get fast uh, here? So, um, so if I go to the next slide here, you'll see uh, something else. So if I, if I basically overlay those two curves, um, they're going to look shape wise, something like this. I do want to put the caveat that typically, you know, the, the more, the more gradual later peaking slope slag uh, approach, which is, you know, slope slag is the green one right here and current slag is, is the red one right here. And I've kind of extenuated this, you know, what I talked about in the last one is a little bit of a divot there because, you know, we've put so much into that front end that we're not able to maintain it. So we kind of rebound here and then pick it back up again. Okay. Now, what I will say here on this, on this diagram is that typically the green type of force curve is not going to have as high a peak force, uh, as, as the red one. Okay. Now I know it's drawn that way on here, but really this conversation is about shape and not magnitude. So I'm going to stay away from magnitude here because when you're rowing with remote rowing coach, uh, and comparing your force curves, um, we're really just looking at that shape, um, because concept two never intended the force curve to be like this absolute value. It was really more of a relative thing. So, you know, really is useful for comparing, you know, force along a continuum relative to the next point rather than, you know, getting an absolute value on what actually is the force on the handle. But I still think even though it's a basic force curve, it's still pretty, pretty helpful uh, for us. One other last little thing to mention is this is a continuum, right? This is, this is not, you know, this, this is, this is one end of the spectrum. Uh, and then the shrubs log is the other end of the spectrum. Um, this is a continuum. So typically you're going to see, you know, certain athletes row more of a front loaded curve. You're going to go see some athletes more of a thrust stroke is what we call it, uh, which is a progressive application of force from the entry, um, a surging force application, both from entry to release. Uh, whereas the current slog is, is a definitely a front loaded force application, uh, technique. So on this next slide, um, essentially what I'm showing here on this is, you know, when you see uh, the force curve uh, start to bend in on itself, uh, that's giving you a clue that uh, there's a discontinuity in acceleration, all right? Uh, because if, 
if essentially, um, you know, force is mass times acceleration, um, essentially what happens is, yes, the force builds because you're accelerating for the first half of the drive. And then, you know, you want to try and continue that acceleration as much as possible. But the problem is that as the handle speed picks up, it becomes harder and harder to maintain that acceleration. And so what you get is you get, uh, you know, this, this backside of this force curve right here. Um, and, um, you know, that's, that's kind of what's interesting. But the point of the slide here is to show that um, there's been a, in this, in this example, I don't know that anybody's force curve would look exactly like this, but this is academic at this point. Um, what we're getting is we're getting discontinuities here. So we're losing some connection. So maybe there's a problem with connection on the leg drive, transitioning to uh, using, using the body um, or some kind of an activation problem or coordination with the body. So we get this little divot right here, uh, hypothetically. And then, you know, as we start to open the body up, um, we lose that connection again. And so what I've done is sort of exaggerated what it might look like. But basically, if we can say that this is this is convex right here, then concave is right here and concave is right here. Uh, and therefore, when you're looking at your force curves uh, with the app, um, you want to be evaluating to see, you know, where are those uh, discontinuities occurring and that will give you a clue as to you know what part of your drive may need a bit of work technically um, and 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 in terms of application right so the next slide will be kind of helpful to kind of see where this is relative to what you know what we might call an ideal force curve so on this slide what I've done is basically overlaid uh, the Schubschlag uh, slide that I showed you a few few back, and that last slide with with the missed what I call the missed opportunities to get work done or put impulse, uh, you know, into the into the handle and the wheel on the machine, and so what we get here is we get these these areas here which show you essentially what the difference between what you might be doing and how to. Uh, how to improve on that or the margin for improvement uh, from, you know, an, what we might call an ideal force curve to, um, a, a, to, to what is actually happening, right? So, you know, if, if, you, if you like, it's just a, it, I think it's a pretty powerful visual that kind of shows you, you know, kind of what we might be looking for versus what is actually happening. So just kind of keeping that in mind uh, when you're rowing along and um, doing your post-training analysis on, on different things. So we're back to where we started in terms of, um, you know, what you're able to get out of the app uh, when, you, when you do a row. Now, now I've used some of my data here. Uh, this was an 8K steady state row where I was rowing at, you know, various different stroke rates between you know, 17 and 23 strokes per minute. And so if you purchase the, the in-app uh, purchase, it's a lifetime purchase. Um, there's obviously a subscription in the app if you want to do remote coaching with a coach or if you're, if you're, if you're a coach and you want to work with your athletes. Um, there is a subscription for real-time data transmission with a PM5 version 2. But this purchase is a one-time deal. Once you've purchased it, uh, you've got it for good. At the current time of writing, that purchase is three ninety-nine U.S. dollars. So I think it's pretty reasonable for the power uh, that this creates. But if you look at if you look at uh, these these curves, what you see is like at the low rate right here. Um, it it you know I do a pretty good job of accelerating, and then there's a little bit of discontinuity here. So, you know, I might look at how I'm transitioning between, you know, my legs and my, my body opening up. Um, and what, what you see here is that the back end of this force curve is pretty straight, right? So when you're reading this, uh, acceleration is, is, is basically, there's been some discontinuity to it. It's not gone concave. Um, but I'm at that rate. I'm not, I'm going to change color to, let's go, 
black on this one, right? So at that rate, what I'm not doing is, is, is uh, let's see here. It, what I'm not doing is that kind of thing and keeping it concave. Um, so that, that gives me a clue that maybe I need to be working the, the back half of my stroke a little bit. Uh, the concept two isn't like a boat. Uh, it, it sort of somehow favors sort of later on in the stroke a little bit more than it would do in a boat. It's just the way the machine is, is set up. Um, so that, that gives me some clues. What's interesting here though, is that, you know, when I, when I move the rate up here to 21, um, what I get is a little bit, a little bit more, uh, still not great here. Um, and what, what you can see here is as I keep the rate going higher, I do get a little bit more uh, convex, convex nature to that curve. Um, what is also interesting here is that you can compare on this comparison graph, you know, when you're hitting peak force. So, you know, here's, here's where I'm hitting peak force uh, at 17 strokes per minute. Um, here is where I'm hitting peak force at 21 strokes per minute. This is 23 strokes per minute. Um, one of the challenges with the concept too is that time is on the x-axis. Uh, the machine will, the PM will, will derive a force curve data point every 0 0.015 seconds. So what you see here is uh, at 23, the, the time of stroke is less. So the base of this uh, force curve becomes less. Um, and that would be that would be what you would expect. And so it's the limitations of the machine is if this were row perfect, you know, we could have uh, stroke length on the x axis and sort of compare, you know, where am I at a given point in the stroke, as opposed to where am I at a given point in time uh, on that x axis. So but it is what it is, and I still think it's a pretty powerful um, analysis of you know looking at uh, what you're doing in terms of applying force. Uh, again, we're looking for that you know smooth application of force, that keeping the the curve convex all the way around, um, trying to look and pinpoint you know where the 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 curve is coming concave. Um, and, and that gives you some clues on the stuff that you need to work on, uh, in, in the stroke. And so I have another video on my YouTube channel, uh, that I'll try and link to here that kind of talks a little bit about how I would, how I coach that, <coughs> excuse me. But, um, but I think, but I think what we're looking for is a smooth application of power, um, using using the body in an organic way uh, to generate that curve and 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 I think the the solution uh, isn't to target this part of your curve and try and fix it the solution is to treat the thing as a whole organic whole and work on you know a flow of stroke an application of force because what will happen is if you try and focus on this part of your force curve, then another part of your force curve will suffer, right? So when you zone in on one thing, um, I think when you're rowing along that you need to be focused on that organic hole and how everything kind of fits together. Um, because what we really care about is how fast the wheel is turning at this point. So all of these points um, are on a continuity here, resulting in a wheel speed or a boat speed uh, at a certain at a certain point, and um, and I think that's I think that's where you want to be in terms of trying to improve your speed. Is you know how are these how how is it how is it that I'm moving on the machine uh, that that creates the most wheel speed. Uh, at this point, right? Because that's what wins medals. It's not necessarily doing this with your legs and this with your back and this with your arms uh, in a certain way. That that doesn't win medals. What wins medals is boat speed. So um, I've really done my best here to uh, create a tool 
uh, as, as well as I can for what you're given, uh, for what the Concept2 um, collects. And um, I hope that the video has been helpful to you in terms of what you might be looking for, you know, peak force, when does it occur, uh, the overall shape of the curve, what happens when you row at 17 versus what happens when you row at 23. And I, th I think my curve at 23 is a little bit smoother. So I may be rowing that a little bit more effectively in terms of continuity of acceleration. Um, and so maybe more work at the lower rates uh, is going to even help this uh, stroke rate at 23 improve here. Anyway, it's, it's a sandbox. Uh, I hope you enjoy the app. Uh, it's got a ton of features in it. Uh, this is just one of them, but uh, one that I had a lot of fun putting together and, and got some feedback on some other coaches about you know, what would be cool. And um, hopefully this video has given you a little insight into how to use this functionality uh, in the Remote Rowing Coach app. And uh, I hope it helps uh, you along your way with your rowing journey. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it. Uh, I'd appreciate your support uh, of all the hard work I've put in to get the app to this place. More future plans, but here's where we are right now. Thank you for watching. And if you're subscribed, thank you for being a subscriber. And I'll see you on the next video.